As an Englishman looking at Swedish architecture from the outside and thinking about the 20th century and what it's meant in Sweden and what architecture has done in Sweden, what I'm immensely struck by is the extent to which architecture became almost the home for a really, really powerful set of social ideals in a way that I don't think it did anywhere else, perhaps anywhere else in the developed world. Because most of the great utopian dreams of architecture and its function uh, were exploded in the chaos and the damage of the 1920s, the 1930s, the 1940s. But this didn't happen in Sweden. And I think architecture genuinely did embody uh, a great and very beautiful social ideal. And I think a lot of people in Sweden, a lot of architects practicing now in Sweden, um, suffer under the burden of that incredible idealistic past and the great names that are associated with that past and everything that was put into the idea of architecture, how to live up to that. I think it's very, very difficult for modern Swedes as architects and also as consumers of architecture. I think, again, I'm just talking about Sweden, I think, I feel that they have a great deal of distrust and a great deal of anxiety about what I would call the architecture of the private individual, selfish architecture, architecture that is perhaps built for profit or built to show how much richer I am than you are. And yet this kind of architecture is coming more and more in. And so it seems to me that there's a kind of turning point and it's a crossroads, it's a really interesting moment and there are a lot of challenges. What is architecture going to be from now on? Is it still going to incarnate those old ideals? Who is going to be the architect? Who are they going to be the architect for? How are we going to go forward? Norway, I think, is, for me, is a quieter, perhaps slightly more conservative culture than that of Sweden. Again, I'm just talking as an outsider. It's like these words are not gospel, but that's my impression. Um, and it strikes me that there there's perhaps a bit less anxiety. Um, things move along perhaps a little more slowly. Uh, there are occasional masterpieces, such as the Opera House, but it's a very conservative masterpiece of Scandinavian architecture. You can, it's very self-consciously Scandinavian. It, it looks like an up-to-date version of the beautiful architecture of the past, the modernist past. Um, so I think perhaps the challenges there are different. And in Denmark, I think, I think Denmark in a sense is the most European of the Nordic countries from the point of view of its architectural practice now, it seems to me. It seems to me perhaps the least hung up on its own past. Modern architects, contemporary architects, working across um, Denmark, Sweden and uh, Norway have perhaps suffered more uh, than their counterparts elsewhere in Europe what one might call the anxiety of influence, the anxiety of um, the shadow of the past, precisely because uh, Nordic architecture was so strong um, from the 1920s onwards and developed such a strong sense of identity, such a, a strong, almost unified set of conventions. Um, I think it's been harder for architects in those countries in the postmodern period, if we can call it that, to, to break free of the influence of the past, to innovate, to change. Nordic architecture, if one can use that generalization, um, has come to be so closely identified with um, a certain set of social and civic ideals, as well as a very strong sense of the natural environment, that uh, it has a stronger sense of identity perhaps than French modern architecture, English modern architecture, Spanish modern architecture. What do we mean by those things? I don't think we can easily define them. Whereas Nordic architecture, we know what it looks like, or we think we do. Um, we know what it's meant to look like. Uh, we know how it's built. We know what it's made of. And we know the ideals that it was intended to serve, above all, those of socialism, if you like. Um, so it has a fantastically strong sense of identity, and I think that's simultaneously its strength and potentially its weakness. The challenge now is 
how do you reinvent something that is so secure in its identity, perhaps too secure in its identity? 